welcome to Healthy Aging with Gina. And this week I am going to be talking about the positives of living with COVID. Are there any? So that's going to be the subject a little bit later. But as we know, we start every one of my episodes with 10 minutes of Ageless Grace Brain Health Fitness Program. And we're going to be doing four exercises. The first one's going to work on the head and neck. Uh, we're going to be working on all the joints of the body. We're going to be working on the upper body with some swimming motions, and then we're going to finish up with some legs. So if everyone's ready at home, I'm ready here so we can just roll it. Okay, so for our head, face, and neck, it's really very simple. Feet are flat on the floor, hands are on the knees. We're literally just going to ro roll the head in a slow circle. might feel a little creaky, but that's okay. We tend to keep our head very, very static and not roll in all the directions it's capable of going. All right, we're going to stop it at the top. I want you to reverse the direction so you're just taking it back the other way. Keep it going nice and slow. This is not a fast movement. Last time this way. All right, we come back to the center. Now I want this chin dropped down to the chest. So it's a slow drop down, let the head drop back. Never force the direction or how far it can go. You just do what feels natural for you. Beautiful. We stop at the center. Now we're just going to turn the head and look over one shoulder. Again, just as far as it will go, back the other way. Lovely. Now we're going to stretch out the neck. So I want you to just literally tip your head back. You're going to take the chin towards the nose, basically by taking the lower lip over the top and just stretch. And relax it. So just a few gentle exercises to work on the head. Now we're going to work on all the joints. So let's just start with these hands. I want these fingers wriggling. We're going to turn the hands up and down. Nice feet. So maybe the feet are just tapping at the same time. So we're going to work on loosening up all the joints, major joints. Biggest ones are shoulders and hips. So we're going to swing the hands from the shoulders and take them back. Now this is why you should be sitting on a nice firm chair, not in your sofa. Not in an armchair because you don't have room to do this. Swing. That's good. All right, last one back. Hands to shoulders, we're taking them out. And a little quicker. Now bring them to the shoulders. And we're going to take one up. And then that one's going to go down and this one's going to go up. So we've got to coordinate ourselves. Got to think about that one. So that one's gone arm up, one's going down. This exercise helps work on your coordination, something we all need to improve, myself included. A little quicker. One up, down. Good. My feet seem to have stopped tapping. And we need to wake these feet up, so just lift one leg. Just a little lift. But we're working on this hip. And we're just going to take the toe, just do a little circle on the floor. Maybe circle with the hand as well. 
change direction. You'd be always amazed just what 10 minutes of movement stimulation does for your energy. Other side. Doesn't matter which way you start, because you start one way. And then we're going to reverse the direction. Is that right? Good. All right, let's work on these ankles. So feet up and just tap the floor. Maybe tap the hands down as well. So just use as many joints. We've got ankles, wrists working here. How about turning them out? Hands out, feet out. Quicker. Nice. Oh, we seem to be using a lot of the joints all at once. Hips, shoulders, elbows, knees. Great. Now the next one, I want you to make sure you're sitting back against the back of your chair, so make sure your bottom's well back. And we're going to start with our legs and a big kind of frog breaststroke. Got those legs going round. Lovely. Now my speciality, we will reverse the direction. Don't ask me why. For the fun of it, because we can. All right, now I want you to imagine you're lying flat in the pool, in the sea, splashing these legs. You're gonna look up and do some backstroke. You look at the ceiling. Very good. All right, what about doggy paddle? Keeping his feet up off the floor, hands off the floor. Listen, you're all looking at me and I can't see you. I don't know which one of us look funny. Having fun is part of what this program's about. All right, I want you to shift your bottom forward again. Feet nice and flat on the floor. We're gonna do a big press out. Breaststroke arms, chin forward. Keep going. All right, bring these knees together. Shake these arms, stand beside you. Whew, you're getting a bit of a, getting your breath going. Right, we're gonna finish up with these legs, everybody. Just a few minutes, little tap with the heels in and out. Faster, this is your last one. Waking up this hip, other side. Faster than out. Very good. Okay, just tap the other side, toes going in and out. Now again, if it's only comfortable to do a small distance, you do that. But you go as far as your body will naturally allow you to. Might as well use the hand as well. I can feel the heart going a little faster. Should have got my heart rate monitor on. I know I'm still breathing. Everybody else is at home, I hope. Change legs. Remember, you always pace yourself, your own pace. Good. One foot in, one out. Do a few quick ones. Maybe one arm in, one arm out. The more we move our upper and lower body at the same time, the harder the heart's got to work. Shake the hands. Finish. Woo! There we are. Your 10 minutes of ageless grace, brain health fitness. Don't know about you, but I need a glass of water and I'll see you back after the break. And welcome back to part two. Oh, I forgot about this. Aren't we all irritated with these darn things? Um, but they're necessary. And for any of us who are glass wearers, Hands up, who's being driven insane with steamy glasses? 
I think that applies to an awful lot of us. Life changed. I mean, it's almost a year. It's very hard to believe that how things were and how they are now and what has changed in the year for the whole world. And I got to do a trip to Malaysia in February of last year. And it had just started, news of it. And you were walking around the town. Um, I was in the city of Kuala Lumpur. And probably, I'd say, one out of 10 people might have been wearing a mask. By the time I got on the plane to go home at the very end of February, maybe even 30 percent. By the time I got to Johannesburg, not many. But three, four weeks later, in fact, less than three weeks later, we were on total lockdown. The country had closed. Thank gracious I got back in town uh, in time. I do know people who got stuck, and you may know that as well. I mean, that was one of the big impacts for many people. If you were traveling, that you could end up stranded. Uh, I had a friend who had gone to visit her family for her 70th birthday uh, in March in Australia. She ended up being stuck there for three months. Uh, she then wasn't able to get back into South Africa and ended up going to visit her other sister in the UK for another three months. Six months of overseas, six months of expenses. Um, and that's just one story out of many people who we know um, that, that COVID hit just on the travel side alone. I think the reality also was right at the very beginning, it was all about numbers. We all were watching the numbers. We um, heard about the numbers. But as somebody said the other day, it's no longer numbers, it's names. It's names of people that we have known and loved who have been affected uh, and some have passed with this dreadful disease. And then again, on the other hand, you have got people out there who will say the whole thing's a conspiracy and that it doesn't exist. Well, I think until they get sick or until they have a loved one get sick, they won't understand exactly just how real this thing is. And that we do need to be responsible. And by being responsible, we need to, as much as we can, stay home. Uh, we certainly, whenever we are out, need to be responsible for wearing our masks. We need to be responsible for sanitizing our hands, for washing our hands when we can. Because it's not just about ourselves, it's about our interactions with other people. We wear and we do these things for other people because we care about other people. So uh, just to encourage you to do that, one of the great things is that uh, when you're home, of course, you don't have to wear the darn thing. Um, I personally don't wear it in the car. I do see some people wear it in the car. I think that's open for a whole nother discussion. Uh, but I think if you're on your own, I happen to believe there's nobody else in my space. I tend to be in the car 95% uh, of the time on my own, except for my little dog, Biggles. I'm tempted to bring Biggles along, except he has a habit of just barking in the middle of things for absolutely no reason, so maybe not. Uh, but the company of animals is just something that's one of the good things about uh, what we've been able to do over this period of time when we've been home. Because it, it has changed life for so many people that we haven't had the availability of just being able to do what we want. I think we have become a very, I don't want to say selfish generation, but we are used to being able to go here, go there, do this, do that, you know, go out and buy some alcohol, go down the restaurant, meet your friends for coffee, all the things that you like to be able to do. And at this moment, you're not able to do. But there have been many advantages of being able to be at home. And one of the things, because I teach this wonderful program, Ageless Grace, uh, I was teaching six classes in community homes, frail care centers before lockdown. And obviously, um, with lockdown, I wasn't able to go back into them. And um, many of them are 75 uh, and upwards. I think the oldest one who used to come to my class was 101. And she was absolutely bright as a button. So physically getting frailer, but the mind was really, really sharp. And, um, and just so you know, ladies and gentlemen, because you don't have to uh, act old because you're getting older, that um, somebody told me that she still had black, black lace underwear, which I think is simply glorious. I want to be wearing black lace underwear at 101. It's a long time to go, by the way, so no hurries. Uh, so having the flexibility of being able to interact with people, and the hardest thing for people who were in, in uh, retirement homes and frail care centers was being cut off from their loved ones. Um, obviously, during the tightest periods of lockdown, they were not allowed any visitors whatsoever. Uh, certainly between the periods I know between March and October, uh, one of the homes that I went to did not allow anybody in. And 
the only way that older people get to have some real kind of stimulation is with people coming in both to visit them or someone like me coming in doing classes twice a week and once a week I used to go with Biggles and Biggles would do his therapy dog job. So I, I miss seeing them and I know that they miss the classes because in October we, I was able to go back, I did classes for a couple of months, uh, November, December till the second um, heavy lockdown and then they could stop seeing people. But they relied so much, and this is one of the things I want to say, is that um, this generation, the older generation, who you might have thought are not technologically uh, connected, have made so much effort to get connected through Zoom. Uh, I had another lady who was using YouTube and learning how to crochet, literally step by step, almost frame by frame. So there are all sorts of things that you can learn and you can be doing. So yes, maybe COVID has restricted the kind of things that you would like to do, the kind of things that you used to do. But it gives you the ability to be able to, you know, reflect and um, take care of yourself. Your environment might be very, very restricted. But as I spoke on last week, it was a great opportunity to take time to really uh, clear out your own living situation. Because we tend to all kind of hoard and have too much junk it's all too easy just to fill the cupboards and just kind of put things in them. So you've got this time. You know, we're all, many of us, in a fairly tight lockdown at the moment. So we don't have uh, all the openings and advantages that we would be able to do. So I would just say that you can take the time, clean up your own stuff. You've got the internet to go and learn something new. You've got Zoom to go and connect with people. You've got all the wonderful social medias like um, Facebook and Instagram. I've got people going back and finding friends that they were at school with uh, 50 years ago. So it is absolutely incredible on how many uh, avenues that you actually have got. So this is what I mean about saying, as strange as it is, that there are positives because it has forced all of us to think out of the box because we are having to do things differently. Yes, there are people who have very, very sadly lost their lives. There are many people who have lost their jobs. And that is a big, big area, uh, obviously, for many people because they're then having to find second areas of income. But it is amazing that in many businesses, business has been able to expand through social media, through the internet, because you can, that is something that you can be doing at home. And um, you're at home now, because presumably if you're watching me, whether you're watching this on uh, Starstat, Starstat or you are watching it on YouTube, you have the advantage of having um, streaming, of having internet, of having fiber to be able to connect, to be able to, you know, just entertain yourself. So, you know, whether you're entertaining yourself with music, I mean, one of my um, 80 plus year old uh, class students who regularly come because I do do two live Zoom classes a week on a uh, Wednesday and on a Friday at 11. And uh, you can find me on uh, Facebook for Gina Clifford Holmes if you want information about joining those classes because I do have some spaces. So it's a great way to be able to be at home. The Wednesday class is just 30 minutes. So it's all these exercises uh, done. We do them in 30 minutes without a break. And then the Wednesday class is 45 minutes if you're feeling a little bit more active. And I've got people who come onto the class who are in, um, in the UK, in Scotland, in Durban. So this is what I mean. The magic of the internet just connects you worldwide. So many people quite naturally feel that one of the things COVID has done is, has given them a lonelier existence. And this is why I just encourage you that if you have access to what I'm saying at the moment, you have access to all the rest of what is actually out there through modern technology. And one of those things that we can do is that you can go and find people who are like you, who are looking for connection, who are looking for someone to talk to. There are fabulous groups on um, something like Facebook, for example. There are billions, billions of people on Facebook. And you can find like-minded people. You can find your tribe. I found a, a, a lovely group, mainly Americans, uh, and the group is called Cool Retired Women. And um, I, I sent them a little message and saying, I'm, I'm two out of three. I'm cool and I'm a woman, but I'm not retired yet. Can I join? So absolutely, because it's about people who are then coming into that situation of uh, getting ready to wind down for retirement. 
and you know it's fascinating being able to join and to be able to be interacting with people from different places from different countries and this is a great way the one thing none of us can do at the moment is travel I have got a very good friend in Australia who I was Zooming with yesterday and she is in uh, the state of New South Wales. Now, in Australia, all the uh, provinces are, have got banned travel. So you cannot go from Victoria to New South Wales or anything like that. Luckily, like we have here, uh, our provinces are all pretty huge and at this moment we, we can still travel from one to the other. But this country, and, and uh, for me, I still consider it a gift after 25 years to live in South Africa. There are just so many beautiful places to go and visit. So yes, you might not be able to get to the vineyards and you might not be able to get to the winelands and taste great wine, but you know, there are so many other things to do. And the very, very beauty of this country and uh, its nature and its mountains and its safaris, it offers so much and many countries, and even my friend talking about where she was able to get to in Victoria, and she'd gone to somewhere where there were lakes and they were going up to a mountain resort um, because they're retired. So, you know, people like the freedom of being able to travel. So, but you can travel on the internet. You can travel and plan your travel of where you want to go. You have a long-term dream, maybe you want to go to Prague. Well, you can get on and you can find out all sorts of things about uh, the country, the people, you can even, get a little app and start learning some basic words. Uh, the two great apps, Duolingo and Babbel, allow you, um, they have free um, parts as well as paid parts, and it is a fabulous way of being able to uh, learn some expressions. So you say, okay, have that forward thinking. What I want people to do is to realize you can either choose to be kind of stuck in this, oh, whoa, you know, everything is disastrous in this very, very negative state. But you also have the choice. You have the choice to choose a more positive atmosphere to be in, to put yourself out into a positive space because there are plenty uh, of positive things that are out there, whether it's gonna be on the television things that you can watch. I do not uh, recommend hours and hours of watching the news because gracious me, that can be depressing. Uh, but when I'm traveling in the car, I have books on Audible. Um, because I'd far rather be listening to something that is uh, either amusing me or stimulating me or challenging me and uh, then listening to the news or listening to, even if it's on a music station, half the time you're then in, um, interrupted, that's the word I'm after, by, um, by adverts. And I uh, don't know about you, but they drive me up the wall. Um, but that's just a personal thing. So I just encourage you to find, plug yourself into um, the fact that there are people out there who are like you, who would love to talk to you, that you can find them out there through the internet. Uh, you can be, connecting with your family, with your friends, you know, maybe even contact a local retirement home and say, listen, is there somebody who doesn't have um, anybody who, you know, any family or, or out external family or friend members, even if you're just writing them the little, little message that's being sent on an email that can be printed off by the office and given to them and treated like a letter. So, you know, just see what difference you can make. Sometimes all it is is about reaching out to somebody else. It's just one of those huge differences that we can make in the lives of another human being. So if we all take care of each other, we all really uh, are committed to seeing what we can do to make improvements in the life of another loved one. So thank you. Um, I want you to stay safe. I want you to stay well. I want you to wear your masks. I want you to sanitize. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all back next week for another episode of Healthy Aging with Gina. Bye-bye.